My name is Kyle Hayes. My mentor is Dr. Andrea Cullors, and my topic is the female athlete triad. Women are special. This fact is especially true with regard to sports. In fact, women are so special in sports that they have an entire medical disorder unique to them, the female athlete triad. Before we discuss my research question, I want to talk a little bit more about the female athlete triad and what previous literature has focused on. The female athlete triad is composed of three interrelated components, the first being disordered eating. Despite what you might be thinking, disordered eating does not necessarily refer to those classic eating disorders like anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa. Disordered eating simply refers to a higher output of calories than input of calories. These athletes are eating seemingly healthy amounts of food, but because of the high demands of practices, these athletes are not consuming enough calories to keep up. Over time, this leads to dangerously low levels of body fat. This decrease in energy availability caused by a decreased body fat percentage eventually leads to the second component, amenorrhea. Amenorrhea is defined as the abnormal cessation of the menstrual cycle for more than three months. As the body continues to lose fat, it eventually shuts down unnecessary functions. This first function is the menstrual cycle. At first, the athlete doesn't think this is any big deal. In fact, some athletes are even excited about it. However, the lack of menstruation leads to decreased estrogen levels. This drop, paired with the lack of adequate nutrition, then leads to the final component of the female athlete triad, stress fractures. Stress fractures are small fractures along the surface of a bone. While they may not sound very alarming, they can be detrimental to an athlete's career. Stress fractures often take months to completely heal. During this time, athletes are not allowed to condition or practice at all. This can set an athlete and even an entire team back and affect them for the rest of the season. To date, all research has focused on the disordered eating component of the triad. Researchers have focused on this component in an effort to prevent the female athlete triad from ever occurring. But what happens when educating the athletes about disordered eating fails? As I mentioned earlier, these athletes are eating seemingly healthy amounts of food. Sadly, no research has focused on the athlete when it comes to amenorrhea. My research will focus on just that. Specifically, female athlete comfort discussing their menstrual cycles with their coaches and athletic trainers, factoring in the gender for each of these groups. This leads us to my research question. How comfortable are female athletes with talking about their menstrual cycles with their coaches or athletic trainers, regardless of the gender of said coach or athletic trainer? I hypothesize athletes will be more comfortable discussing their menstrual cycles with their team's athletic trainer than with their coaches regardless of gender. I have come to this hypothesis based on Crocious, Fisher, and Nichols' 2015 nurse study and Crocious, DeFries, and Kerr's 2018 athletic trainer study. These two studies found that athletic trainers at the collegiate level and nurses at the high school level were not only capable but also very willing to discuss their athletes' menstrual cycles. This would carry over into their interactions with their athletes. It is also possible athletes will be more comfortable discussing a medical issue with a medical professional like a nurse or athletic trainer than they would a coach. For my project, I will conduct a survey of the female athletes on campus at Missouri Southern State University. I will attempt to reach all approximately 250 female athletes on campus at Missouri Southern. I hope to get a response rate of 75%. My independent variables are the gender of the coaches and athletic trainers, and also the support the athlete plays. I did not mention this earlier, but the female athlete triad typically pre presents itself in sports which emphasize lean muscle tone. These are sports like track, cross country, cheer, gymnastics, and dance. The dependent variable will be athlete comfort. My cross-sectional survey you will use Likert scales ranging from 1 to 6 to determine athlete comfort. I will then use Spearman's rank order correlation and cross tabulations with chi-squared for statistical significance. Prior to distribution of my survey, I will convene a focus group. This focus group will be used to, to determine the survey's effectiveness in covering all necessary components of the athlete's comfort. This is my timeline. 